morning. It's Sunday morning, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And I'm Kathy Hoffman, and uh, you, we're going to cook with Kat this morning. That would be me, because my mama called me Kat, so that's why I named my cooking show Cooking with Kat. Now I'm going to do a whole meal today, so they're going to be quick, and then I'll put them all together. And I'm not going to be home for Thanksgiving, so I'm not cooking. So today, we're just going to kind of have a little meal. And Miss Cindy and Tracy is coming over for dinner. And we're going to do live and uh, promote the boutique, Cece's Boutique in Gulf Shores, Alabama. That's located inside Cece's Salon Day Spa and Boutique in Gulf Shores, Alabama. And if you can notice my hat, it says Madison, Indiana, and that's the state of Indiana. Just throw that in. That's where I'm from. That's where I lived with my sweet Joe. And um, our daughters were raised there. And Joe was born in a farmhouse that we lived in. We bought it. And we're going to build our home there, but we decided not to. And we built it in town, but anyway, this is a salute to Madison, Indiana today. Everyone back there is in my heart today. All right, we're going to start out with dessert first. Ha ha. Joe always wanted to go to a restaurant and just order desserts. And then he would have, you know, but he never did because I wouldn't let him. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> so we're going to make a buttermilk pie. And very simple. I'm going to go fast because we've got several things to make today throughout the day, but um, Helen Rains was a teacher at Yale Muncy School, second grade. Both of my girls had her, and um, she's a mother of a dear friend of mine, Jan Andrew, and so she made buttermilk pie, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not eating that. That sounds terrible. I don't like buttermilk. But it was excellent. Now, this is not her recipe because, as you know, I'm moving and her recipe is in my recipe box that I've already packed up. So, this is a uh, MrFood.com buttermilk pie recipe. And it's really cool because if you watch the video here, the uh, Mr. Food was sent a package and he opened it up and it was from a friend and he's like, why am I getting this package from a friend? And it had two old recipe, the old metal recipe uh, boxes in there. And he went through them and he found the buttermilk pie and he's, he was like me, he said, that don't taste good. But So he made it. So this is somebody's mama, grandmama, great grandmama, buttermilk pie recipe. And what it calls for is a refrigerated pie crust, because you know, it's Thanksgiving. We gotta do things quick. We can't do all that fancy stuff. And we, it's a cup and a half of sugar, a three tablespoons of flour, and I've just got my flour on top of my cup and a half of sugar, and a cup of buttermilk, which I have here, three eggs, which I have here, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now, I've talked about this before, but I don't use, you know, just any vanilla extract because that, the vanilla extract will make or break your dessert. And this is Nielsen Massey. It's uh, Madagascar bourbon, pure vanilla extract. And if you remember, I had a big <laughs> container of this and it fell down on the ceramic floor one night and I had vanilla bourbon smell all over my kitchen and you talk about sticky. So I keep it in the box now, which is kind of a very nice cardboard box, but it's the world's finest vanilla and flavors, the Nissan Nielsen Massey. Thank you for your purchase as a 110 year old family owned business, our century long promise has and always will be to provide you with the mo world's most alluring and complex flavors. They do all kinds of um, flavors, extracts, and so forth. 
Okay, so what we do, I've got the heat, oven heated on 425. It's heating up. Got my pie crust in, in my uh, pie plate, Longa Burger pie plate. That's the 4th of July. I know it's Thanksgiving. I don't, I'm messed up on my holidays. Ha ha. But, uh, and I just used, a, I always pam it. And then get that pie crust in there. So in a large bowl, we're going to whisk the sugar and the flour, which remember it's a cup and a half and three tablespoons of flour with the buttermilk. And I got that baby full and I didn't spill it. Woohoo, it's my lucky day. All right, so we're just going to whisk this. You can see it's thick. Get that incorporated really well. You can see it's getting easier to do. And then we're gonna add the eggs. And then I lost my recipe. But uh, we're adding, I'm gonna add one egg and I'm going to whisk that. You can see it's popping. And then I'm going to add two eggs. And of course, I got my my trusty paper products that I use for my ingredients because I don't want to do dishes. You know, I lost my dishwasher. All right, now we're going to put the egg, the third egg, in here. Wipe that off so it don't get all messy. Whisk this. It's as simple as pie to make really quickly. And then uh, we add the vanilla, which is a teaspoon. Oh, heck. That's all it took was a little tap. Got my little teaspoon here. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. And then uh, a fourth of a stick of melted butter. And we just put that all in there. Of course, I melted it in my trusty paper plate, paper bowl. Whisk this all together. Pour into the pie shell. I didn't get the cinnamon out. Well, but let me get the cinnamon. Because it says you sprinkle with cinnamon. Now, don't y'all be looking in here because it's a mess. But I label, you know, I don't have nothing to do, so I label my spices. <laughs> okay, so all you do pour that. I'm trying to press. I'm trying to be clean and neat. I'm not going to worry about all that, you know, because I got the gimpy hand. Alright, I'm going to put that over there. And then it just says to Sprinkle evenly with cinnamon. I don't know how evenly that is, but that's what we're going to do. Okay, that's it. And we bake it for 10 minutes at 425. Then we reduce it and uh, bake it 35 to 40 more minutes. And until a knife is inserted and it comes out dry. Now, <clears throat> I have this little gadget here. This one's from Pampered Chef, and I have another one. But anyway, probably after so long, I'll put that on there, and that keeps the crust from getting too brown. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the oven. Thank you, we'll see you after a while. We're gonna be making um, want the menu? Let's do that. Let me tell you about the menu. It's going to be Betsy's Buttermilk Pie for dessert, bacon-wrapped chicken breasts that are from uh, Food Network, 
French onion potato casserole, that's from a site called Plain Chicken, and then herby butter dinner rolls, and then just jelly cranberry sauce. So, bye. Oh, what's that saying? I think our pie, our buttermilk pie might be done. Let's look. Let's turn that off. See, I did it with my gift hanging. Look how pretty. You can tell that it's ready because how it's congealing. Isn't that pretty? Of course, it's gonna fall a little bit and see how this has protected that thin pie crust there? And it's just perfect. So, I will post these recipes after I post my video so you'll have them. This is the buttermilk pie and uh, we'll get to the other things later. Bye now. Okay, we're gonna start on the potato casserole because I can go ahead and make it and put it in the refrigerator and not have and have that out of the way. But you know, it's Sunday and it's a Bloody Mary day. I'm trying to get one of the condiments a kosher pickle. Mmm. This is super easy. Mmm. French onion potato casserole. Looks like that. And it can even be made ahead and frozen if you want to. Oh my gosh, the thing. I mean nuts. Okay. A 9 by 13 baking dish. One package of frozen... 30 shredded, shredded now, hash browns. And then uh, a cream of chicken soup. I've already got in there. That's hard for me to dip my damn pan. And my iPad's acting up like a fool. I'm going to just pour these in here. With the cream of mushroom soup. I guess could already had that done. Oh well. Wow. Good thing I got, you know, got my holidays messed up. I'm kind of fixing a pre-Thanksgiving, but my pie made it in my Fourth of July pie pan, pie uh, longer burger dish. Now I'm gonna fix hey, the casserole. My Fourth of July. Mixing bowl. You know, bullet stays a little mixed up every once in a while. And we're going to put the potatoes in there. And then the, this is just French onion dip. It goes in here. Ooh, got a slob of that. My recipe won't stay up. What the heck? And then you, uh, we get it real quick. On again. I'm gonna have to improvise. Stir this all up. You put the two cups. Now, shredded cheese. I don't buy that pre-mixed, dried up stuff. I bought shredded cheese and I grated it. I think I need a bit more. And then you put the butter in here. And you just pour that when you get it all mixed up in your dish. This might take me a minute, so stay tuned. Hello, now it's Almost four o'clock in the afternoon and I've had a nap. I uh, did the rolls, look how pretty they are. And this was so hard to do. I just took them out of the freezer and put them in a grease pan. They're frozen. <laughs> and then uh, put a pan on top of this 
and they've risen and I'm gonna make a garlic or, or herb butter to put on top. And anybody can do that. Look how pretty they are. They look like I've spent all day on them. And then in the afternoon after my nap, I'm having a Powerade rather than Bloody Mary. Now after a while, it'll be martini time and then a glass of wine when we finally eat. But now we're going to do the bacon wrapped chicken breast and I've got the potato casserole in the refrigerator and this is the cornflake topping and the butter. Got to melt that for that. Then my rolls. So now we're going to start on the bacon wrapped chicken breast. And this is courtesy of Food Network on Food Network. I better get over here and stir my... I'm sauteing some onion. You know, my famous burner here. I'm going to turn it down or they're going to burn on me. And then uh, it calls for olive oil and half of a small yellow onion. And then I'm going to put garlic in that and let that uh, brown. And then I take it off of the burner and I put in six ounces of cream cheese, two tablespoons of finely chopped chives, some a teaspoon and a half of Worcestershire salt, salt and pepper. And then we're going to fill that on the chicken breast that I have over here. And I I took, these were real fat, so I should have sh saved one. I'm sorry I didn't. But you cut it down almost flat. Don't cut through it. And then it had this big gob of meat, so I just made tenderloins. And I'll use those later. And you can look how flat they are. And we're going to put this uh, filling. We're going to roll them up and wrap bacon around them and put them in dish. Now how good that looks. Okay, so we're going to come over here and I'm going to put the garlic. The onion is done its thing here. And this burner is still too hot. Lord of mercy. And of course, you know old Gimpy here. I have to use the stuff that's already done. And get this brown. And I did use my olive oil with the garlic in it rather than regular olive oil. And you can see how pretty and brown that is. So I'm gonna take that off and put it over here. And then I put in the uh, salt, and I just bought whipped cream cheese spread rather than the, the uh, square, because you know, this is so much easier to get out and melt. And you put your chives in here. And this makes the, the uh, filling that we're going to put on the chicken breast. And I don't want to take too long because we've got some other things we're going to make. See that that's making a filling. I use a, ta a teaspoon and a half of Worcestershire. I just guess on that half. I'm not a big fan of Worcestershire, Worcestershire. I don't know how it is. It's kind of like boutique, boutique, whatever. Say it however you you feel like it. And then we put the chives in here. And I bought those at the grocery and chopped them up. Gotta use the real deal now. Make things taste really good. You go to all this trouble and all this time, you don't want to use artificial stuff. That's why I use that good vanilla. Takes time to cook. I'm gonna go over to the recipe and make sure I've got everything in there. I think maybe salt and pepper. Remove the pan from the heat and add the cream cheese, chives, and Worcestershire sauce and stir until evenly combined. Season the filling with salt and pepper. I like to use a pepper grinder, but it's hard with my hand. So I've got the old 
regular kind, and I always use seasoned salt, uh, not seasoned, but sea salt as salt, because salt is too much. And look, I got lipstick all over my hands. Probably got it all over my face, too. Gotta look pretty. Not like a daggone clown. I think this is incorporated enough. So, uh, okay, I've made one of the chicken um, bundles. It's gonna take a while to cook because it's a fat, but you take the bacon, three strips of bacon, and you know I've never fixed this before and I'll probably never ever fix it again. And then you roll it up. And of course you're gonna squeeze out that good feeling. And then you come over here. Get that off that chicken. And bring it down, skin side down. Then just flap your bacon over it, just like this. You don't need a toothpick. And then just turn it over like that. And of course I've got, um, you need it on a wire rack and I always put parchment paper down cause I hate to clean up a mess and that kind of helps. And then I'm gonna wash my hands and do the next one. And see this is pretty easy and it's gonna look awfully fancy. chicken really good. Three pieces of bacon. I'll do one more. Put the seam side down. Bacon, flip it this way. Flip it that way. And there you go. Kind of adjust them. Don't want to fool with them too much. And then the last one. These chicken breasts were enormous. I have enough tenderloins. Or two meals. I can't tell no story while I'm doing this because I'm too busy concentrating. <laughs> That's no fun. I'm boring. Flip, 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 and flip it one more time and it didn't land on the floor. How's that? All right, that's our chicken wrapped in bacon. Just gonna leave it on there. We're gonna cook, I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna over read how long those babies are thick as can be. You cook them at uh, 375. Bake until the chicken is almost cooked through and inserted, you know, thermometer. I ain't doing that mess. Uh, about 35 minutes, and then you heat the broiler and broil the breast until the bacon turns golden brown and crisp about five minutes. Well, I'm going to cook these longer than that, that's for sure. All right, on to the next. Okay, now you can see I've got the hash brown casserole here. Waiting to put the top on it. The oven's heating for the chicken breast. There's our buttermilk pie. Now I'm making carrot pot pies. And I've got my onion browning. And it calls for, this is from Country Living. Calls for two tablespoons of olive oil, which you 
I have there with the onion, a medium onion, a pound of carrot cut into half inch pieces, which you can see there, I cut them a little smaller, salt and pepper, chopped garlic, tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves, a fourth a cup of flour, and two cups of whole milk. So, I browned the uh, onion, got it going, and we put in, said seven to 10 minutes for the onion. And then you add the carrots. You just go ahead and put the carrots in here. And then you salt and pepper carrots. And I've got my ramekins over there and they're uh, panned. pepper on and you cook until fragrance let's see now about 10 minutes so we'll be back in just a few minutes while the carrots are cooking the 10 minutes to get them nice and uh, tender I'm going to make the topping for the uh, casserole and I took this call for two cups of corn flakes and so I use a bag and I put my cornflakes in there. And then I use my rolling pin that I treasure more than anything because in downtown Madison, Kinder Leininger, who is now Kinder Auction, had a cooking store. And this was way back in the mid... Joe and I got married in 78. I'd say it was like in the 80s. And she had a wonderful little sandwich deli in there. And uh, I told him I would like a uh, rolling pin. And so he went down to Kendra's for my birthday. And you can see it has a wooden, um, it's Fox Run. It has a wooden stand. And it's heavy as heck. So if you want to knock somebody out, get your rolling pin. And there it is. It's one of my prized possessions. So you just put your cornflakes in here. I melted a stick of butter. Pour that right in there and make a little paste. You know, in my paper plate. Paper plate. Stir this up. And that's your topping, cornflakes and butter. That's all it is. And then you just sprinkle it over the top. Use my again pan. It'd be pretty good, really. Oh, the oven's ready. Spread that out. So we're going to put the casserole and the uh, chicken in the oven. This bakes an hour. And I'm going to give the chicken, I'm going to go ahead and cook it put it in and let it cook. I can always take it out before I brown it. But because I'm it said 35 minutes, but I kind of think it needs more than that. Alright, on to the next. Okay, I'm videoing while we're cooking because I've had a catastrophe. So the next thing we do to the carrots is put in the garlic. Might be too much, I don't know. And then we put in the thyme. Remember, this is a pot thyme. And this is fresh thyme that I have done over here. And I'll show you, you know how to do a, a thyme. And just let this get fragrant. You just go backwards on time. Like, can't do it because I'm video. But just hold it and then go backwards and see how that's coming off. You would hold it with one hand and then just go like that with the other one. Okay, that's become fragrant, like it said. So now we're going to sprinkle the flour over the vegetables, which is the carrots. And it called for... 
I'll have to look. Now we're going to thicken and make, you know, the, the sauce, the juice, with milk and flour. Sprinkle flour, uh, stirring one minute, so, and then you put your milk in. So we're kind of making a roux here. One minute kind of gets that flour kind of browned. And then we put in two cups of milk and that's gonna thicken. And then we're gonna get puff pastry out and cut the sheets, put the carrots and the ramekins and then get the puff pastry out. Okay, now I'm gonna start gradually pouring in the milk and it'll start to thicken up. Slowly stir in milk, simmer until, see how it's thickening up? So we've got to add more milk. I'm going to heat down just a little bit more. Oops, messy, messy. <laughs> so I'm having Thanksgiving on Sunday. Now I hope these haven't taken too long, but we're going to eat good after a while. Miss Cindy and Tracy will be here about 5.30. It's 4.36 now. I've got the potatoes and the chicken in the oven. See, this is thickening up and I need to add more. We'll go ahead and pour it all in there now. And my heat turned off, so I'm gonna adjust that and get this thickened up. All these recipes seem complicated, but they're very easy. All I've got to do is get these ramekins fixed and then make the herb butter for the bread. And those keep rising, look at them, <laughs> without the top off. Isn't that funny? And these are the ramekins that I have pammed. And we're going to pour the carrots in there, and then I'm going to cut the uh, puff pastry. I'm not getting it out until... The freezer till right when I use it. Melted butter's in the microwave because you brush the top of the uh, rolls with the herb butter and the top of the puff pastry with butter. All right, I'm going to let this thicken up and then get my puff pastry ready and then I'll assemble them while you're watching. Hello, we're nearing the end and it's cocktail time and it's dark outside. It's 510 and I hate this time, but 610 at home. So it makes it worse down here because it's an hour early, you know, at five o'clock it's dark and you think you're ready to go to bed by six, but it's cocktail time and I'm having an old fashioned and this whistle pig piggyback is the best 100% uh, rye to make a uh, old fashioned with. And that's what I have tonight. And you can see, better get another one. Whistle pig is what it is. Whistle pig piggyback. They have, this is age six years and then they have age 10 years, but that's a little over the budget, you know. Cheers. D. Mishler, a good friend of mine from back home, she worked for Brown Foreman and retired from there, and she was the Woodford Reserve uh, specialist advertising, and so she turned me on to an old-fashioned. I go spend the night with her, and we have an old-fashioned made out of Woodford, and the Woodford bitters, and the Woodford cherries, and they're pretty good, too, so this is cheers to you, D. I'm doing mine with the pig. <laughs> okay. Now remember my rolls that I just, you know, they were frozen. I took them out of the freezer. There you go. You just lay one in your pan. Uh, spray the pan. Lay one in. Spray your, uh, rim, uh, not rim, but the plastic wrap. And 
let them rise and these have risen so this is the better I'm going to brush on them and yes I'm using a paintbrush because it's the easiest way what I have is chopped rosemary lemon zest and chopped thyme so I've used thyme twice I've used it in the carrots that you can see there that are ready to go in the oven and then uh, I've used it on the butter and I just melted this in the microwave look how pretty we're eventually going to eat sometime and I will video will video the finished product when it's all cooked I haven't taken too long today because you know I was making all this stuff so I'm going to finish this, get everything done, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, here's the finished product. There's our herb rolls. And, of course, you've seen the buttermilk pie all day. There is the carrot pot pies. There is the French onion hash browns. And there is the chicken. Look how good that looks. And here's hey. Miss Cindy and Tracy. Oh, hey. We are the wonderful, uh, we, we are the recipients of this wonderful food. <laughs> and we are, and my husband's so thankful. He thought he was going to be eating cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> Which they're going home with the box yes, of those. Yes. Bye now. <laughs>